And so those correspondences, like you were saying, something illuminated, you know, inside me. Yeah. That those type of, of of hints or comprehensions are the ones that I am after, you know, yes. because they are outside of the the regular structure of what happened in daily life. Even even the psychological thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was you. thinking of the word reciprocity, the reciprocity of action. Mm -hmm. Because that's what you're doing. You're getting right. there's something happening to you mm -hmm. because of the way you're the things you're doing in the world. You're that's acting right. in the exactly world, right. and there's mm -hmm. a reciprocity that's right. mm -hmm. going into you, mm -hmm. right? So you're right. you're acting in two directions at once. Precisely, you're going doing that, and it's doing this, right? You, and it and you know it. Mm -hmm. And you have to keep track of both those things at the right. same time. Mm -hmm. And they are not clear, you know. No. At least what I am no, it's experimenting very well. <laughs> is very unclear and very intuitive. Yes. You know, because I had, you know, when, when we went to Europe with Mary, uh -huh. I think I told you this, that we went to a little town called Henday, that is mostly known because uh, Hitler and uh, some other people, you know, went there and to plan the war and, and shit like that. And then some people know that there was a cross there, that nobody knows where it came from. But we didn't know where it was. But I was obsessed in finding. That is really the most ridiculous thing that you can do, to go to a town that you don't speak the language, that you have no idea, that you have never been before, and say, well, I'm going to find the cross of end day. Uh -huh. yeah. And so, so I started, I, but you see, what moved me at the time was irrational. Mm -hmm. Very <clears throat> irrational, but very coherent. So there is a problem, you know? Uh -huh. I knew that it has a, 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 I have to find it, something like that. And it was coherent in the sense of the, the strong force in one direction. No, but in here. In here, right. right. Irrational in the sense that how do I go about, you know, I'm going to go and ask. And of course, nobody had any idea. But one guy said, oh, I think you, I know what you mean. Uh -huh. And then uh, in, in half in French, half in English, I have no idea. Said so there is a church that has a cross like that. And I remember, because of I was reading the book, the Fulcanelli book, that there was, the cross was outside of the church. That is very weird. Mm -hmm. And we found it. We found it. And I was absolutely fascinated by the whole thing. And then you look at it, and it means nothing. It's a little cross, and oh, it's old. Oh, I thought it was big. Well, exactly right. I imagine it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You mark this cross, too. It's a cross, you know, it's tall, but not, not amazing. And it's, it's uh, I don't know what material looks like, carved in rock. And it has all these little beautiful moons and suns, all that chemical stuff is uh -huh. right there. Uh -huh. and, uh, and of course, the church have no clue that yeah, right. of, of the meaning. Nobody knows. No. And, they, and then I found out that they were very sort of not upset, but they couldn't understand how a cross could be there before the church. Uh -huh. So they obviously built the church. Yeah. And then they incorporate the cross of Christianity. So a lot of people don't, don't even think more than, than that, oh, that's a cross of Christ. Uh -huh. But the cross actually existed before. And that's the beauty. So, so you see, the, that type of uh, things, like monuments or things written in, 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 in stuff like that that tells you stories mm -hmm. or things, you know, that are very incomprehensible for modern times, and then you can still find them, yeah? And they do talk about other things, yeah? Mm -hmm. So that was kind of my experience internally, very mi mixed up with things and then the, all of this, uh, you know, in, in a place because imagine you have the cross and then you have all the church with the bells and all of that. And, and you will think that there is a relationship, but it's not an equal relationship. The cross was a symbol used way before uh -huh. and, with, and with other purposes. And, and then to, to get into that was really interesting because I was constantly um, 
a little bit altered, you know. Mm -hmm. It alters you, or the, uh, and how, what is the word that we use now? It's not alteration. Destabilizing. <laughs> well, I, I don't know which one. But no, that's the word. Destabilized is the word. Mm. Because it talks right. about the nature of the state. Right. Rather than confused, doesn't talk about anything. Right. So, so to, to make the whole thing very short, after that experience, I was, then I started looking for that type of thing. And then I just ran into the entire story of the Cathars. Cathal, yeah. Cathars. Yes. Yeah. The, the, the ones at the church decided yeah. to launch an entire crusade against, and they killed them all, you know? But again, was that in the same region? In a little bit farther down, yeah. going towards uh, France, directly into France, but on the lower part, yeah? Halfway, and in the, in, in the process of getting there, we have to go through Lourdes. Yeah. That's, it. That's another allegorical thing uh -huh. beyond a description. But when we go to the place, you know, in which I found out about the, the Cathars and all of that. How do you spell it? C-A-T-H-A-R-S. Yeah. Uh, no. It was a religion. Uh -huh. It was a group of people who had really incredibly coherent beliefs that were directly in opposition to the church. Uh -huh. yeah. And there was a guy who actually converted. He was a Christian that was sent there to fight these guys and he got converted. <laughs> so, so, and a lot of people really were, were very, I mean, they liked the whole thing because it made a lot of sense. Uh -huh. And the church, of course, launched a crusade and they killed them all. They burned them. Uh -huh. yeah. So nothing was left of something that it was incredibly beautiful. But for me, the, what, what was interesting is that why on, on earth I had no intention of getting into any of this stuff when I took that trip. Uh -huh. I was on the yes diet of Mary, you know, uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. I, I'm going, you know, and get the whole thing paid. And then suddenly we could get well, into... you should frame that a little bit for us, the yes diet of the Mary. The yes diet of Mary, yeah. well, that she says everything yes uh -huh. to everything, you know, so she thinks, you know, that to, to be on the yes diet is the best thing that happened to your soul. And I agree. Uh -huh. yeah. And so, so I was, okay, we're gonna go there. Yes, we're gonna go there. And so I was open to all the possibilities. So did she have any, did, for you it was your impulse that got you to the cross? Oh, absolutely. Your I had that impulse. Yeah. That was the only impulse that I had yeah. on my own. Uh -huh. But then that impulse made me get into the stories and then the, the road to Santiago that I knew vaguely, you know, but I, I went with no intentions of finding anything. Uh -huh. And then suddenly I'm finding all this stuff. It's so like you one thing little the point the other is that you begin to go in this path uh -huh. and then you start finding things. And it's a very intuitive path. It doesn't have a, a clear defined map, you know? So uh -huh. you have to go like that. You have to go with your feelings. And it's, I, th I, I think that it has a lot to do with what we were talking Yeah. You have to go outside of the regular structure of thinking or comfort or whatever and establish other kind of relations. What was most uh -huh. important for me is that I was operating from a different register. Uh -huh. it's, a other, it's a different... I was definitely um, in the intuition thing. Yeah, and I'm starting to now realize more and more, I think this is what Sila's calling the inner look. Uh -huh. The inner look is an active direction of the consciousness that's different yes. from the habitual yes. one. That is not your tendencies. <laughs> Sorry? It, it has it, very little to do with your tendencies. Right, it doesn't. Right. And it's a look that comes from being a little bit uh, more self aware. Yes, absolutely. And in a good way. Yes. And yes. I think so. At least it makes sense what you're saying yeah. to me. Well, you'll have to tell us more about it as you discover it. <laughs> Yeah, developing the inner look, that, that's what it's all about. Yeah, well, it's all about, in some ways, letting go of thought, too. Pretty much. 
Yeah. Or, or, or connect to a different kind of thinking. Yes. Or relating. Right. You know? right. It's a different kind of thinking that we don't think of as thought. Right. Right. That's why I use intuition because I don't know anything else. Uh -huh. I don't right. know any other word. It's because it breaks the limit of thought. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that once, once you sort of get into this world of abstractions and see, take it as far as it can go, there is one more place you can go when you've taken it as far as you can go. But you have to let go of the whole structure to go there. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to drop the whole scheme right. to go there. Right. Out of eight and into nine. Yeah. As they would say. As what? Out of eight and into nine. Ah, oh, out of eight and yeah. into nine. And really, <laughs> into ten. Yes. Ten is a one. Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. Out, in, and then. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So, okay, all right. It's a very good review, I think, yes. of what we did yesterday. Okay, one second here.